Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's explore the second method to find the domain in the range of a polynomial. In this case, what we're going to do is called setting up a table of values. We're going to uh, plug in some values for x and then see what the corresponding values for y are. And we do that in order to be able to graph the polynomial and find the roots of the polynomial and find the max and min or the local max and min of the polynomial when we graph it. So set up a table of values. We plug in a certain value for x. We do the calculation, so we do the calculation here, and then we find the particular value for y. So the reason I put this middle column in there is because we're going to have to try and figure out what y is equal to when we plug in a particular value for x, and that takes a little bit of work. So let's start with uh, maybe negative 2, x equals negative 2. When we plug that in there, we get negative 2 quantity cubed uh, minus 4 times negative 2 squared plus a negative 2 and plus 6. All right, let's see what then the y is equal to. So that would be minus 8. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it here. So minus 8, that would be 4 times a minus 4, that's a minus 16. Uh, that would be a minus 2 and a plus 6. So that's a minus 26 plus 6, which is equal to um, minus 20. Let's try the next value. How about minus 1? So and then here we get a minus 1 cubed minus 4 times minus 1 squared plus a minus 1 plus 6. And so that would be equal to a minus 1. That would be a positive 1 times a minus 4. That would be a minus 1 and a plus 6. And that is equal to 0. And it looks like we found one of our roots right here. Okay, continuing on the next value, let's try 0. That would be easy. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 6. Y would be equal to 6. We don't have to actually work it out anymore. All right, next we're going to try the value of 1. So we have 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 squared plus 1 plus 6. So that would be uh, 1 minus 4 plus 1 plus 6. That would be 8 minus 4. That would be 4. Now, remember also we're dealing here with a polynomial of order 3, third order polynomial, and we should at least know what that general structure will look like. Since the coefficient in front of the x, x cubed term is positive, we know that the polyno polynomial should look something like this. The general shape of the polynomial will look something like this, and so there could be a possible three roots, and uh, also we could find the y-intercept, so this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and of course we'll have a local max and a local min, which we'll probably want to find as well. So now at least we know what the general structure of that will look like. Uh, continuing on, let's try the number 2 here for x. x equals 2, that gives us 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared uh, plus 2 plus 6, and so that would be equal to 8. That would be 4 minus 16. Uh, plus 2 plus 6, that is 16 minus 16 is equal to 0. Looks like we found our second root. So we have found our first root, our second root. Now let's see if we can find our third root, uh, the number 3. So that would be 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 3 plus 6. And so that would be 27. That would be 9 times a minus 4 is minus 36 plus 3 plus 6, that's also 0. It looks like I found all three of the roots. Root 1, root 2, root 3. So it does indeed kind of look like that. And then, uh, of course, if we then plug in bigger numbers, it will continue. I don't think we need to go any further. We may want to do one more thing, try to find the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So set x equal to 0. Then we come up here, there it is. So this here would be our y-intercept. We already found that point. And now let's begin to graph this polynomial. And let's find the three roots. So we have the root when x equals negative 1, y is 0. So negative 1, 0, there was one of the roots. The second root was found when the x equals 2, so 1, 2, there was another root there. And finally when x equals 3, Right there, there's a third root, so 1, 2, 3, here's negative 1. So we know that the function will come up from here, from down below, up here, go up to a certain height, come down here, down here, and then back up this way.
So the y-intercept is right up here at this value right here. So here's the y-intercept where y is equal to 6. Now, notice in this case, do we need to find the max and the min on this graph? And it turns out the absolute max goes off over here to infinity in a positive infinity direction. The absolute min goes in this direction to the absolute to the uh, negative infinity in the opposite direction. So when we're looking for the range in the domain in this particular case, there are no limits. You can see that in the domain wise, the, the graph will continue to go to the right forever as we go higher and higher. Over here, the graph will continue to go to the left forever and ever. And as far as the range is concerned, yes, we go to maximum infinity, uh, to positive infinity this way, negative infinity this way, which means there's no restrictions to the domain at all. We can say that the domain is equal to all the x's such that the x's are an element of the reals and we can say that the range is equal to all the y's such that the y is an element of the reals and no restriction to the main range for a polynomial like this a third order polynomial no restrictions the domain and the range go out to infinity both in the negative and the positive sense and that's how it's done